Okay, everybody out in the rotunda, you see me on that screen there? Look on that screen, I'm talking to you. There's no need to be out there because we have room in here. So first of all, come on in here and get you a chair, all right? You're out in the rotunda. Now come on, look at this, that's me on the screen. I'm in here. You need to come in here with me. So come on, everybody, come up out of there. It's time to stop fellowship and we got all day to fellowship. We're gonna have a party today. Everybody said, amen. All right, everybody stand up. Now listen, this isn't what we had planned. It doesn't matter what we had planned. All that ever matters is what God has planned. Amen? Everybody, amen? All right, now, so we set out today to have fun. Now, the one four hours that we needed are the one four hours that it's raining. <laughs> it literally didn't start raining until we started. It's going to stop raining about the time we stop. So that means God decided he was going to let it rain while we were doing this. And then you get that. So we're going, okay, we're good with that. But it's time for the church to exhale. You know, you breathe in for a year and a half. And it's just time to exhale. And that's what we wanted to do. When we thought about doing this whole reach one outside, we're still trying, we're working right now on a way to get the food trucks to you so that you can still do the food trucks without getting wet and eat inside. Everybody's working to make it all work. We're gonna have a ball. Those of you that are guests, never been here before, this is how we do church every Sunday. <laughs> Actually, not quite like this. <laughs> not quite like this. But I love this song. Sometimes you can just worry and worry and worry and worry. And God just goes, hey, you're a very blessed people. Everybody, you're a very blessed people. We're here today. People are watching this on live stream. You're not here. I feel bad for you. But you know what? I'm glad you're there. I wish you were here with us. But man, we're going to have a party today. And we're going to have fun. And everybody said... So we're going to let the group just start us off with Bobby McFerrin's song about not being worried and not worrying and being happy. And let's decide, let's decide the rain, the storm, everything's going on in our life right now. Nothing we can do about it, but come in here and enjoy one another and enjoy Jesus. Everybody. So Father God, give us a spirit of joy today. I pray joy falls through this camera into a house that's watching right now and falls on those people there. I pray that joy falls on these people that are in this room and those that are going to be sitting out in the rotunda. Lord God, let joy just fall on our people as we just celebrate you. Lord, we refuse to worry right now and we're going to be happy in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's enjoy the group for a minute.
heavens are telling, telling the earth how great you are. We are responding to your love. The oceans are rising, rising and falling at your We are responding to your love. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Come on, that's the whole song right there. Come on, lift it up. Sing, my God. My God, how great you are. exactly what pain you're carrying I don't know what problem you brought with you today some of you I would imagine have some immense things in front of you like overwhelming just disappointment fills your life but God is greater that's what I need you to know this morning you're in the right place we're singing to the right one. There is hope. There is hope for you, sir. There is hope for you, ma'am. 
I don't care how deep your life has gotten rooted into this world and you can't seem to break out. I don't know if you feel ashamed to be here, but you shouldn't because we don't think we're better than anybody in this room. Not a one of us thinks we're better than anybody in this room. We all came the same way as you did and we didn't get much better. We just got saved. We're getting transformed. We're getting changed, but we don't think we're better than anybody else because we give all the credit to Jesus for who we are. We might be better off, but we're not better than you. And we're glad you're here this morning. So maybe you don't even serve our God this morning. Maybe you don't even know him. You're going, I just came with somebody. And you're going, I don't get all this. But I want to tell you why we all came out in the rain today, why we invited you in the rain today, and why we're working our backsides off out there trying to figure out how to create the best atmosphere we can for you today. Because he's great. Because he's great. And he's greater than your problem. He's greater than your problem. He's greater than your sin. He's greater than your addiction. He's greater than your pain. He's greater than your loss. He's greater. So we got to sing that again. We're not in a hurry this morning now. We got time to worship Jesus, but he's greater. So Father, I pray as we sing this song that all across this room, miracles start happening in men and women's life, with healings in their bodies, healings in their minds, healings with the things, Lord God, the pain that's in their heart from the losses that they have, the emptiness they feel, the loneliness they bear, the rejection that they've suffered. Whatever they've walked through and brought into this house this morning, this is your house and you've called it a house of prayer for all nations. And so we pray for our brothers and sisters right now, whether they know you right now or not. I saw you heal those who hadn't called out upon you yet. So Lord God, I pray that you will heal some this morning, that you will move through the gifts of the Spirit right now. Heal, deliver, and minister to people all over this room as we just simply say, you are great. So I ask you, my friend, in, in Jesus' name, amen. So I ask you as we sing this song, maybe you've never done it, but might you acknowledge with me, might you acknowledge with me, if you have the, if you have the intestinal fortitude to go, I'm going to take a risk, and I'm going to worship this God Russ is talking about. I want you to sing this song. You go, I don't sing Christian songs. I'm asking you to sing this one for your sake. I want you to acknowledge him. Believe that he is, and he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He saved me, he'll save you. He's healed me, he'll heal you. He's delivered me, he'll deliver you. He's transformed me, he'll transform you. We're here for you today, but you gotta sing to this God. So will you just lift your hands if you're comfortable with it, but if not, everybody sing this song. I'll let them start wherever they want. Let's tell God how great he is this morning, amen? The heavens are telling Telling the earth how great you are We are responding to your love The oceans are rising, rising and falling at your
We respond with praise. We respond with worship to our great King. your voice and sing, my God, how great. Hallelujah. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Yes. Live your voice and sing, my God, how great you are. How great, how Yes, he is. Sing it again. Say, my God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. It's no one like you, love. My God. My God, how great you are. How great, how great. Father God, you are great. There is nothing and no one like you. You are awesome. You are mighty. You are awesome and you are mighty. In that while we were still sinners, you sent Jesus down to take our place. There's nothing good about you and me. There's nothing good about you and me. But God in his greatness, this is why we're singing right here. He gave his only son to have a right relationship with you. When he didn't have to. When we did nothing deserving of it. So Father, we just want to stand up right now and tell you that you're great. Tell you that you're awesome. To thank you for your love and thank you for the son, Jesus. And thank you for the option out of our darkness and into your marvelous light. Lord, you are great. Thank you so much for the life and the breath that we have. May we always worship you. And all of God's children said, Amen. Come on, church, can we give him a praise because he's great? Come on, give him a great big praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Man, are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great place to be. Man, we're so glad that you're here. Before you're seated, tell somebody I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I didn't fall down on the steps, amen? I was just telling myself, don't fall down. Hey guys, welcome to South Point Community Church. God is good, amen? Man, so glad that you guys are here. Angela, wherever you are, you can make your way to my seat. Hey, if everyone could pull out their phone, you are really going to want to do this today. Um, and if you could bring me that bag right there, Angela, there's an Apple bag. Um, pull out your phones. We're gonna do our online connect card. If you are new here, you're gonna wanna go ahead and do this. How you fill out the online connect card is by texting the message MYSCC to 484848. And the main reason why you wanna do that today is because at the end of the service, if it's your first time here, we're gonna be giving away an Apple Watch and an iPad. Hey, God blesses, amen? <laughs> so. If it's your first time, make sure on there, put first time guest and make sure to click on campus. Online, we love you, but you're online today. You know, this is for the people inside the church. So make sure you put first time guest and put on campus. I'm being very clear so that you can give yourself an opportunity to walk away with an Apple Watch. I wish I could be a part of this drawing, but I can't. But this is for you. So at the end of the service, we will give those away. Uh, you can also fill out the Connect card on our app. 
or uh, going to southpointcc.com. But if you don't have either of those, just text my SCC to 48. 48- 4848. If you brought someone today, make sure you tell your friend, hey, it's your first time. Please fill out this Connect card. We'll send you the link and it'll walk you through the steps. Just give us as much information as you feel comfortable with giving us. And we just use that. We want to help you grow with God. We want to help you get connected to a church. We believe that's why God brought you here today. Amen? Not just for an Apple Watch or an iPad, but because we believe God has a plan for you. Um, okay, well, since, uh, since this is Reach One Sunday, you can just put that right under. Since this is Reach One Sunday, I figured, let's have some fun today. You guys wanna have some fun? Tell someone next to you, say, let's have some fun. All right, so we're gonna play a game. Uh, Angelo, if you could bring up our Oreos. Who believes that Oreos are the best cookie in the world? Man, I love some Oreos. You know, they just fill me with so much faith. I believe it's the anointed cookie, and we have that for today. And we're gonna have a couple of contestants. Angelo, if you would stand right down here. So for our first game, we are going to have three contestants, all right? And we're gonna start in the auditorium. This is for anyone in the auditorium. Have you ever heard us say, hey, you should share a service while you're here at South Point? You ever heard us talk about that? Yes, we always, hey, it's real easy. You can share your, something on your social media. So what I need, if you wanna be our first contestant, the first person, and guys, do not run up on the stage. You saw me, I almost fell. You will for sure fall, you know what I mean? So make sure you, this is Angelo. Everyone say, hey, Angelo. I got arguably the strongest guy in our church. Well, second strongest, he's almost as strong as me, okay? So you're gonna run to Angelo. Do not run into him, he is a brick wall, okay? So the first person to run up and can show me on their phone, on their social media, on one Instagram, Facebook, whatever, at some point or another, how you have shared something from our church. It could be a service, it could be a post, it could be on your Instagram story, whatever. I need to, so go ahead. If that's you, find it on your phone and run up here. We got. That's next, yes. You'll see. All right, let me see, let me see, let me make sure. All right, come on, Carrie, come on, Carrie. Come on, come on, all right. You guys can go back to your seats, you're too slow. Good, good try, good try. All right, your name? Carrie. This is Carrie, and she's been coming to church at South Point for a really long time. Everyone give it up for Carrie. <laughs> you stand right here at this table. All right, second person. This is for the rotunda only. So if you're in the auditorium, you guys can wait a minute. If you are in the rotunda, please pay attention to me. I don't know which camera's on me, but pay attention to me. What, you ever had someone pray over you in church and their breath is a little bit stinky? You know what I mean? Like there, and there's a lot of faith, but it's like, man, this dude's breath is so bad. Okay, I don't want that to be me today. So if you are in the rotunda, you know what I need from someone in the rotunda? I need some gum. I wanna make sure I don't have stinky breath today. First person from the rotunda to run into the auditorium with some gum. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Cheer them on, cheer them on, cheer them on, cheer them on, cheer them on. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Let me make sure, let me make sure this is gum. Is it really? All right, yep, it's gum. All right, good job, China. Give it a, a round of applause for China. Come on, Ryan. Ryan, if you will stand right here. What's up, Ryan? This is Ryan. They've been coming to church for what? Six, five years. So glad you're all right. Last one. This is auditorium only. Auditorium only. Well, actually, we can include Runtada. If y'all can get here faster than auditorium, man, that you're really fast. All right. Um, what I need you to do for this one, for our third and final contestant, I need you to first one to come up to the stage with your neighbor's shoes on. You need to put on your neighbor's shoes. First one to Angelo with your neighbor's shoes. Who's gonna be first? Who's gonna be first? Let's go! All right, come on, come on, come on. Give her a round of applause, come on, everyone. All right, what's your name? Madison, how long you been coming to South Point? Like a year, everyone say, hey, Madison! All right, right here, stand right here. You guys can open your Oreo cases. How this game is going to work, some of you may have seen this game before, The first contestant, let me stand right here, to get the Oreo cookie from their forehead to their mouth without touching it wins 
And what you're going to win, I forgot to say this, what you're going to win is a, a four pack to the escape game at the, at the St. John's Town Center. So it's four gift cards for you and your friends to try out the escape game. It's super fun at the St. John's Town Center. So it starts on your forehead, and you're going to work your way to your mouth, but you cannot use your hands. And once it drops on the floor, leave it there and get another cookie, okay? First one to do that. Here's how we're going to do it. The right side of the room is going to cheer for Ryan, okay? So split down the middle. You guys are cheering for Ryan. The left side of the room is going to be cheering for Carrie, okay? This side is cheering for Carrie. It was it Matt. What was your name again? Madison. And all of the rotunda is cheering for Madison. Can the rotunda make some noise for me? Come on. All right. Here we go. First one to do it. Make sure you cheer. Can we make some noise as we start? On your mark, get set, go. Come on, cheer him on, cheer him on, cheer him on, cheer him on. Don't use it. Come on, Ryan. You're right there. Come on, Ryan. I believe in you. You can do it. Come on, Carrie. Cheer him on, come on, cheer him on. Oh, it was so close. That was so close. Oh, oh, winner, winner. Give it up for Ryan. Give it up for Ryan. Let's go. Give it up. Wow, wow. Was that first try? Wow. All right, you guys can find your seats. Good try, Madison. Carrie, maybe, yeah, take your cookie if you want to. That'd be great. Give it up for our contestants. Ryan Olsen is our winner. <laughs> he takes a stack of Oreos. I love it. I love it. Yeah, grab the Oreos for me. All right, the next, we have one more game. You guys want to play one more game? You guys want to do that? We're going to give out another four-pack of the escape game at the St. John's Town Center. Make some noise if you want to play one more game. Y'all want to? That was kind of soft. Are y'all sure? Make some noise if you want to play one more game. There we go. Jeez, y'all put me to sleep up here. All right, this game is called Next Level. Tell someone next to you, not the rotunda as well. Tell someone next to you, say Next Level. Next Level. How did you grab the cups for me? Put them on uh, one stack on each table. I need one stack for me. Thank you, Angelo. All right, how this game is going to work. Actually, I'll tell you in a minute how it's going to work. Here's what we need. The first couple to run to Angelo, you have to be married, okay? Got to have a ring on the finger, okay? The first in... This is in the auditorium. The first couple in the auditorium that has been married a year or less. Run, Angelo. A year or less. Let's go. Good try, guys. Good try. Hey, sit closer to the front next time. You know, get here a little bit earlier. You know? All right, Andy and Maddie, come on. Everyone say, hey, Andy. Hey, Maddie. You guys stand right there for me. All right, next, this is going to be, um, this is going to be from the Rotunda. Well, no, actually, this is auditorium still. Auditorium, just an auditorium. If you've been married between the years of five and 10, five to 10 years, first couple, first married couple, come on, come on. All right, guys, come up here. I don't know you guys. Guys, when this, y'all come up. When this couple ran, what's your name? Emily and, and John. Emily ran out of her seat first. John was still sitting there. She's like grabbing him, you know? All right, Emily and John, y'all grab a table. All right, last, this is from the rotunda only. I need someone, I know you're, this has been, you're gonna be a little bit older, but you need the cardio, okay? From the rotunda, if you've been married 10 years or more, 10 years or more, first person to the stage, first person to the stage from the rotunda of 10 years or more, We have anyone? We have anyone? You gotta have your spouse with you. Come on, cheer him on, cheer him on, cheer him on. I love it. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Y'all come up to the stage. Give him a round of applause. What's your name? Brian? Brian and. <laughs> I'm out of breath too. Mary Helen. Guys, Brian. Brian was in the rotunda. Mary Helen was in her seat. Ryan is running down the aisle. Mary Helen just runs out, <laughs> runs out of her aisle. Man, that's what I'm talking about. I love it. All right, how this game is going to work, guys, this game is called Next Level. Each um, spouse is going to participate. Once each spouse has finished the task, you will win a four-pack. So for you, you can go on date night with another couple that you know. This cup is blue. All the other cups are red. You're going to take your blue cup, and you are going to rotate it to the top. 
and you want to go until that cup will come all the way down to the bottom, all right? So you do one at a time. After you have done it, you'll see the blue cup go down, then you'll hand it to your spouse, okay? First couple to win, first couple to finish is going to get the gift card. All right, right side of the room is going to cheer on Andy and Maddie. Yeah. Emily and John, Emily and John. Left side of the room is Emily and John. And Brian and Mary Helen, all of our fans out in the rotunda. Okay, here we go. Let's make some noise for them. Let's make some noise. On your mark, get set, go. Go, 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 go. Hey, cheer them on. Guys, cheer on your wife. Cheer, cheer on, cheer, cheer on, cheer on your wife. Cheer her on. Come on. Cheer them on, cheer them on, cheer them on. Make some noise. I can't hear you. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Oh, 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 cheer boy. I need some help. I can't hear you. Let's go. Let's go, Andy. Let's go, John. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, winners, winners. All right, all right. Yeah, stop, you lost. You can go back to your seat. You lost, you lost. Sorry, good, good try. You ran a long way, but that doesn't win. You gotta win the cups. All right, Emily and John are our winners. If you guys would make, make some noise for Emily and John. You guys can head back to your seats. Good job, bro. I see you clutch up there. That necklace had, gave you some power. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, as we, we're about to go into our message. We're so glad that you guys are here. I just wanted to remind you guys one more time to fill out the Connect card. If you haven't done that yet, just text my SCC to 484848, and we're going to send you the link, and that, that is going to enter you into the drawing to win either the watch, the, the Apple Watch, or the iPad. Um, make sure you put first-time guests and put on campus. You guys, thankful, you guys thankful to be at church today? Man, thank you so much. We're so glad you guys are here. Love you guys. Welcome to South Point Community Church. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. Boy, I just feel the anointing now. <laughs> feel, like, <laughs> feel like we're ready for a message. Did any followers of Jesus show up today? <laughs> Great to see all of you. Well, look, um, we had a big plan um, that has been drastically changed, you know, and, uh, but we've figured out some ways to, uh, as many of you as possible, I'm going to say this twice, that can stay um, we're, we've set the food trucks up where you can actually get in line without getting wet and then we're going to work with the rotunda the best we can for as many of you that want to stay and fellowship and we really hope a lot of you do because that was a big part of what we were going to do and if it's dry enough by then but we don't think it's going to be for the kids to go out and play in the games they're set up um, but we're doing the best we can and we're excited about being here with you all and uh, so we're going a little slower and taking our time in here or we were going to hurry because of that and because we want to have a moment with Jesus and have a lot of fun together. So uh, with that, we want to jump into the Word of God this morning. And, I'm, and so get your Bibles, and I, I want to present a message uh, called, Do You See Me? Do You See Me? So get your Bibles if you have them, or you can use the screens, all right? Psalm 31, 16. Psalm 31, 16. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Then couple that with Psalm 27, 9. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Father God, help us in this moment to hear you in the context of your word. In Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. All right, hope you guys can hear me right in the rotunda. They'll be out there to see if my voice is loud enough. But um, thanks for being here and sitting in that environment. Um, does anybody remember MySpace? <laughs> How many of you remember MySpace? MySpace. That, the whole world changed from that point on. In 2003, in September, <clears throat> no, August. August of September, uh, um, August of, <laughs> of 2003, August of 2003, MySpace started. Facebook followed up in February of 2004. In February of 2005, YouTube entered the scene. In um, what would be March 2006, Twitter moved into our lives. Uh, 2010, in the month of October, Instagram started. Snapchat appeared in August of 2011. And then finally, TikTok uh, came on the scene in August of 
2016. And the world has never been the same. 18 years is all these platforms have been in the American process. But now there's so much of what and who we are, you can make fun of them, you can say what you want, but the world has changed since these social media platforms have entered the scene. Just changed. Now we can be mad about it, disgusted with it, uh, but most of you are on it, so you can't be too mad. There's a few of us that are holdouts and uh, that I'm not on anything. In fact, I am accidentally, you know how you sign up for, like you try to get to a city and they say, use your Facebook account, and I hit that button by mistake. And now my thing keeps coming on going, you have 14 new people that want to talk to you. I'm going, I don't know who that is, and I don't want to talk to them. <clears throat> so I've got to shut down that page. So if you've been contacting me on a Facebook page, I've never, I've never looked at it in my life. And, uh, but, you know, there, there's a, the world has changed over these 18 years. The ability to be seen, the ability to be seen, it, there's more opportunity for that than there's ever been. We've never seen anything like this in the history of the world when you can get that many people to see you that quick to hear you. You can become, go from being invisible to being completely known in an instant. One post. One right post. One right post on YouTube. When Justin Bieber was 14, he was discovered on YouTube singing covers. He made $55 million last year. Discovered on YouTube. No intention of going anywhere with it, just discovered. He's the most famous. There's a whole list of you. Go on and Google that. You'll see the list of top 10 people that came off of YouTube. Somebody found them on YouTube and they became famous and then later became rich. And uh, I, I think it's a big deal because I think we all have a great desire to be seen. Everybody in this room does. Even those of you that claim to be recluse. And um, uh, what's the word for when you don't want to be around people? Introvert. I figured all the introverts would tell me. I was just trying to find out who you were. And, uh, and, so, and, uh, and so, so I got you. We have more of them in the room than I thought. Sorry for the crowd, but they'll be gone soon. All right, just don't get nervous. They'll all leave you in a minute. And you'll be alone again. And, uh, and so, but, uh, it, but it's, you know, the, the, all of us have a desire to be seen because to be seen in our minds instinctively is to be known. If somebody sees me, they're known. Um, one of, it's really interesting to me. If, uh, there was a big poll done. Quite a bit of money was spent on it. And the generation that everybody talks about right now, the millennials, of course, Generation Z gets a lot of press now, but that's kind of the end of the millennials. And uh, there's two ends of the millennial generation. One is the front end is closer to the uh, old school people, and the other end is closer to the new progressive movement of the world. And, uh, and they're all in a certain uh, calendar of when they were born. One out of three of them, one out of three of them was polled and asked, would you rather be rich or famous? And one out of three said famous, would rather be famous than rich. And, and when you think about marginalized people, think about any marginalized people in the world, somebody who's been in a minority who's been abused or shelved or marginalized, uh, and that's anything from women to ethnicity. Uh, you'll hear this quite often. What they'll say is, I need to be seen. I, I don't want to walk around invisible to you. I, I need to be seen. And I actually think there's something to that. Isn't that the role of most parents? One of your job description as a parent is when you hear this, watch this, Dad. Watch this, Dad. Watch this. Watch this, Mom. Watch, me, watch Mommy. Watch this. And, um, and the thing is, you're going, they just really want me to watch. No, no, they want to be seen. And, and it's, it's the desire to be seen, not watched. If you're watching them and affirming them, you see them. And I, 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 to, this, to this day, I, and, and I think our, as mates, if you have a good marriage, you actually look at each other a lot of times and go, watch this, hon. Watch this, sweetie. Watch this, baby doll, whatever you call your mate. Watch this, you hunk of man. That's what my house. <laughs> Look, it's just the way she is. I can't help it. And uh, so I just, I, I, I try to calm her down, but. Now, here, here's what I want to tell you about that. Say, yeah, that's arrogance and pride. No, it's not. I think God has created us that way. I actually think we've been hardwired, gang, with a need to be significant. It's in us. You're not going to get rid of it. Because you're human, created by God, 
you're going to have this desire to be significant, and you can't be significant and not be seen by somebody. Significance is being seen by somebody in a right way, in a way that you desire. So I don't think all the desire to be seen, to be acknowledged, to be known is wrong. I, in fact, I think to say it's wrong is you're going to be fighting an uphill battle because God has hardwired it into you. And here, here's what I think it comes from. But it, it comes because I think God has that in us as a motivation to pursue him. You were made to say this. Watch this, God. Watch this, Father. Watch this, my king. Watch this. Watch me serve you. Watch me live for you. Watch me honor you. Watch me help you with your mission. Watch me. God made us with a longing for him. And that longing for him equates your longing for significance. You want to be seen by him. And seen in a certain way that is absolutely vital to your emotional and intellectual well-being. And especially your spiritual well-being. So it's, it's this whole thing. It's, but it's like all desires. The desires that we have. God gave us all the desires. Gave us all a desire for hunger. I'm going to tell you a couple of things about my trip. I, I went on a cultural, um, a, a cultural um, science trip. And to go you know, get into the depths of this world. So I went to the Clay County Fair. Took our grandkids to the Clay County Fair, and, and I mean, there's some, you can really get cultured there. And uh, so, I, so I went there, and, uh, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I have desires. So they have funnel cakes there. In fact, they don't have one healthy piece of food on that entire avenue that you walk on. I mean, there's nothing healthy there, but I wanted all of it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and it was all served with lights, and of course, they had the smell was coming out. And I thought, I'm just going to sin greatly against my body. If the Lord doesn't help me, if he doesn't yoke me now and get these desires under control, I'm going to leave this place very unhealthy. And I'm going to look like the rest of these people that are here. And, uh, and, and, so, <laughs> and so I thought, but I, but I have a desire. I get hungry. You know what I'm saying? I, I have desires. I mean, there are certain things that I want that God put in me. I, I can't get rid of them. I don't want to be rid of them. Your desires and fulfilling those desires are what, means, what it means to be alive. And one of these is to be seen, to be known. We want to be known. And I think that's why the whole social media platform appeals to so many people because you, for a minute, <clears throat> you might get a bunch of likes, thumbs up, and actually believe that means something. Seriously, it means something. Or you wouldn't care if anybody disliked it. If somebody do a thumbs down on you, how dare they? <laughs> Hello? Come on, yes you do. You don't like a thumbs down. Why? It doesn't mean anything. It's a button. You haven't even talked to the people. But it means something to you because you wanted to be seen when you posted. And you wanted to be affirmed by being seen. Because we have this need inside of us. And here's what I want to say to you just real quick. Get this. We, you... Everyone in the rotunda, everyone online, you are important to God. Every one of you in this room, you say, all oh, you Christians? No, no, no. You, sir, you that don't serve my Jesus, you're important to him too. And yes, my, <clears throat> yes, my sister that doesn't serve Jesus, you're important to him too. You are important to him. We were created by him, so we are important to him. Because we're important, that is in us to cause this desire comes out of it because God sees it important. We start to feel like I need to be significant. That's what we learn from these two verses I just read. If God's face is smiling, looking on you and shining on you, he's seeing you and he's happy with you. So you're pleased, you're happy, you feel good in the presence of God. He says, if you turn your face away from me and are displeased, I feel insignificant. I feel away from you, I feel alone, I feel empty. So the psalmist is telling us, when God sees me, when he's looking at me, his face is looking at me, I feel significant. When he isn't looking at me, I feel insignificant. That's what the psalmist is saying. Now there's three things I think we need to understand. 
if you want to have a deep sense of significance. All right? Here's one. Number one. Put it on the screen for you. If you want to be significant, and I'm bringing this plane in for landing. I know you're shocked. It's a long landing. <clears throat> Number one, a deep sense that God is pleased as he watches your life. A deep sense that God is pleased. He's happy with you. He's happy with you. This, this is what the psalmist means by God making his face shine upon you. You say, well, how do I make sure that God is happy with me? Well, honestly, you can never work your way into it completely, but the best thing you can do is try to align yourself with his precious word as you grow to know him more and more. Is it, you read this Bible and go, it seems like God likes this, so I'm going to do this. seems like God doesn't like that. I don't understand it all, don't get it, but I'm going to agree with him because he's God, so I won't do that. Now, you say, is that do's and don'ts? I, I guess so. I think it is. But it's not out of getting his pleasure. It's by saying, I don't want you to have to turn your face away from me because I don't do what I'm supposed to do, and I do things that you told me not to do, and you can't just sit there and make me feel good about all this stuff as I reject you. God can't make us feel good about rejecting him. If he really loves us, he's got to do something that helps us get ourselves in line with him so that he can look on us with his pleasure. So what we do and don't do does matter. So you study the word, you grow, you get friends, you get in a church, you get under preaching, you get people to teach you how to live that life. And you don't have to do it all right. You don't have to get it all right out of the gate. In fact, I think the day you breathe your last breath, <clears throat> you're still, still going to be trying to fix things in your life. But you fix this and you fix that and you fix this. And if you're fixing things and being transformed into his image, you don't have to have arrived, but you have to be on that journey. And if you're on that journey, he's looking at you with a smile. He's looking at you with a smile. And so you got to live that life. That's, I don't have anything else to offer you. I know there's a lot of preaching out right now that says, don't do anything. God just did it all, and he certainly did. He saved it. There's nothing you can do to save yourself, but there is something you can do to please him. And that there is no other gospel that works for me. i got to partner with him in my transformation. Number two is you need to be in a loving relationship with some, not just one, some that affirm your existence. All of us in this room need people who love us. You, you, you can't go, I don't need people. If you say that, you're so, so wrong. Yes, you do. You need people and you need some people that love you that when you walk in the room, they light up. When you come in the room, they are so much better inside because you're there. They love you. And I mean, you're like special to them. I, there's no child that's ever been born that doesn't want to be special to their mom and their dad. They want to be special there. They want to be loved there. And there's so much I could say about raising children right now, how important emotional constancy and emotional consistency is to them in your love for them and how that will help them in their every struggle in life. The more loved they know they are, you can miss it on some discipline things. You can miss it on some training things. You can miss it on how you did your marriage in front of them, but you can't miss this one. They have to know they're incredibly loved. And all of us need people that love us, but not just our mom and dad. We need other people that have come into our life that have loved us. And you can't have that unless you move into communities where people actually are trained to love one another. Trained. We don't love one another naturally. We're not very good at it. We hurt each other's feelings all the time. We offend one another all the time. We're always doing things wrong. We're super selfish. And everybody, please say amen. Amen. We're just selfish. We have a hard time relating to other people, so you need to be in a community of people who understand that it's hard and stay in the game using forgiveness and repentance and reconciliation, application of Scripture, having a community around of accountability so that you can actually stay in the game long enough with people until those people love you in a way that is way beyond anything you do or are. Is everybody here still? Everybody, if you want to feel significant every day of your life, you need some people that love you. I don't need everybody to love me. Now, I don't want people to dislike me, so don't, don't hear that as some cavalier, sarcastic thing to say. 
but everybody can't love me that way. I have to spend time with people to be loved the way I'm talking about. I have to be in their presence a lot. They have to be in my presence a lot. They have to move into a part of my life that other people aren't moving into because of time and quality and opportunities. But I have to have some of those people. And the more people I can get to love me, the better life is and the more significant I feel. And when I feel that I'm loved by enough people, when I go out into a world that always rejects me, always creates insecurity, always creates fear, I'm just fine. I'm just fine out there with that selfish, cold, dark world because I have these people that love me. But if you live in such a way that you don't have that kind of people that love you, that world out there will make you so insecure, so fearful, so afraid, so rejected that you won't ever want to even go out there. You'll have no joy in that world because they're takers, not givers, because they don't have anything to give you. But if you got it in the circle, in your home, in your church, in the men and women you walk with, they've learned how to love one another, you'll always feel significant no matter what the world tries to do to demean you. Number three. Number three, you need to belong to a tribe that gives meaning to your existence. That gives meaning to your existence. Uh, here, here, you say, isn't that the same thing? It's not. One group loves you, just loves you. You know, my kids, I love them. They know I love them. It, 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 what if they did something wrong? I love them. Just like you with your kids. They do something wrong, you love them. You know, you'll figure out what to do to get them on a straight line if you're right. But you'll love them. This is different. Meaning, meaning is different than being loved. That means I have a reason for being here. <laughs> There's a reason for me to be here. So here's the thing I want to say about that, is that everyone needs a mission. I'm going to get into this in deeper detail here in a second. Everyone needs to be with a people together on a mission. You just have to be. You can't just float through life going, you know, I'm my own thing, and I'm just trying to, I'll just kind of go here and there, then I'll do this, and I'll be in this group, then I'll do this, and I kind of go over here now because that's fun, and you just keep moving around because things are fun. But listen, you got to have a group of people that you say, we together are partnering with God to do something together for the glory of his name. You have to be a part of a group of people that are on mission together, and then that people gives you meaning. I mean, today for me, all right, I, I, I do have to take a, a second, so hang on just a second, Kurt, don't start yet. And, um, but I, I want to take just a second to tell you something. So today, and nothing was going right. We've been up since, <laughs> I've been up way early, watching the radar, praying over it. I tried my Elijah prayer, doesn't have that faith. The cloud of the size of a man's hand became rain quickly. And uh, so I wasn't able to stop that one, so that didn't work. You know, so then I, I stood up in my office, and I'm saying, for a miracle. Well, that didn't happen. I said, well, okay, then, Lord, finally, I became a, that's when I became a Reformed Calvinist. I said, well, Lord, this is what you wanted to happen, so now I'm in the middle of it, so now what do you want? And, uh, and so I said, I'm looking for the good in all of this. And because uh, we're supposed to be outside, and there's supposed to be thousands of people here. We're supposed to have fun and all day long. We're out there in the sun, and it's just going to be incredible. And uh, so then we end up in here doing all of this stuff. And, but here's the thing. I have watched a group of people work like bees for hours now. Keep changing. Well, hey, we can do this. Change. Then we can do this. So I'm on the phone with Kurt that's right there that leads our worship team, Chad, who's back there, who leads all the sound team, and his job has been immense because we're setting up screens and moving it from the outside to the inside and then the inside to the outside and getting speakers set up everywhere, then changing it all. No one has complained. Everybody's tried to figure out how to do the next thing. You know, all my team... I mean, Aaron, Ryan, everybody, Sarah, at least. I mean, everybody who works up here. Doug, Doug's been amazing. Had ushers here for nothing. They're all bitter. <laughs> he got them here early because we were going to park everybody. Then there was lightning storms, and I, he said, I can't put them out there in lightning. I'm going, why? They're expendable. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, I mean, what do you mean we can't put them out there? God and I, <laughs> <laughs> so, so they were here early with nothing to do, but then I watched all the guys set up anything. We were changing things, and they'd set up something else. Then Jason's real sick. Jason Curley is real sick, and, and I won't let him in the building. He's that kind of sick. And, uh, and so I said, hey, look, could you drive up in your car and, uh, and just sit in your car so you're here as we make these decisions? So the next thing I do, I see him out walking around the lake in the rain, 
Then I see him out under the tent. Then I see him doing this. And then my last one was <clears throat> we decided to move the food trucks to the front. You'll see when you go out. Those of you that are in Rotunda, they're behind you now. So you actually, by sitting in Rotunda, one thing's good. If you want food trucks, you're the first in line. <laughs> see? Those who are last will be first. And uh, that's how the Bible goes. And um, all right, I got to hurry here so we don't stay here all day long. I know you're about done with me right now. But I, and then I look out there, and there, I see Jason lining up the food trucks. It's pouring rain. He's out there with his bald head with his umbrella, and then he was getting frustrated about something, so his umbrella went down. He goes, I said here. I said here. And he's out there running up back and forth, setting up things. I just looked at him. I thought, man, I love that guy. He's so frustrated that he can't be in here. So I finally I said, hey, you got to come in and just poke your head in the back and feel the anointing on this service. I said, don't talk to anybody. I said, but just sit. And he came in, texted me. He says, man, the devil's losing, Pastor Russ. Isn't that fun? But I mean, ushers, people making coffee, all these changes being made. No one's complaining. Everybody's going, what do we need to do? All on a mission. And I'm going to tell you what, as a pastor, I don't even know who to say thank you to. There's so many. I know my little team that I work with, and we're just an itty-bitty group. We don't have a lot of people that work here. We're just itty-bitty. We count on all of you. And man, did people just rise up, and they were on a mission together. And you know what? You'll feel significant when you go home. You'll go home and go, I helped make that happen. I helped make a moment happen, and God used me. And you know what? Good for you. Because you have to be on mission with a group of people. And there's other things. It isn't just working at the church on a Sunday morning. There's a lot of things. But you have to be to be significant. Amen? All right. Find your tribe and join it. You say, well, how do I get in that tribe? I'm going to tell you. So here you go. Now you can go, Kurt. I'm, I'm going to land this. Let me tell you. I'm going to say some phrases. They're not going up on the screen to finish. Every person here is uniquely designed by God. I'm going to say something that's old school that we used to hear all the time, but I want to say it to you now. Your fingerprints identify you because no one else in the world has your fingerprints. God in his holy design has made you like nobody else in so many ways. You are so unique, it's incredible. There is not another you. I have identical twin sons. You say, Russ, do you ever get them wrong? Oh, I mean as recently as the last few months. If they don't stand in the right way or if they're you know, positioned in the wrong way, I'll go, hey, Aaron, Ryan, Dad, sorry. Hey, sorry, if you think kids would have emotional problems, it would be mine. I don't even know their names. <laughs> but they're not even remotely the same. Two totally different human beings. There's, there's no one like you. God made you, you. And the world might have all kinds of things to offer about what they think about you, but let me tell you what God thinks. You're amazing. I actually believe that whenever that young boy comes out and he has Down syndrome, God goes, I'm going to get so much glory from you. I think when a child comes out with issues that they're going to have for the rest of their life, God goes, it's okay. I'm going to get so much glory. You're unique, made in my image, and I can use you. And when you come home to glory, we're going to fix all that. But you're unique, and I love you. I'm good. They might not think you're good. I think you're amazing. That's what God says about all of you in this room. You're unique. No one like you. No one like you. Next phrase, every one of you has a spiritual assignment from your creator. Not from Russ, but God gave you an assignment. Now you have to find it. He said, Russ, exactly how do I find it? Like, I feel like I'm called to teach. That's everybody. Everybody starts going, I feel called to teach. If everybody taught who had that call to teach, I don't know who would listen. So many people have that calling. But, but here's, here's what we believe about this. You don't have to ask God what your assignment is. You serve everywhere you have a chance for a long period of time, and I promise you, all of a sudden you'll know exactly what you are. Serve with all your heart everywhere you can in every way. Don't go, I don't think I'm called to that. You probably just don't like that. Serve there. We were taught all of our early Christian life that phrase that no one uses anymore because I guess it's old, but bloom where you're planted. 
Bloom where you're planted. And then you just find out what your gift is and what your assignment is. It, you find out. Like if you get married, obviously that's an assignment. If you have children, that's an assignment. But you have other assignments that are harder to discern. All you got to do is be a servant. Serve, serve, and then serve, and then serve some more, and then serve some more. And ser next thing you know, you'll know what your assignment is. I, I don't know what Manny Ramos' uh, assignment is. I just know that he came off COVID, had a rough ride. And man, he walked in the building today to help us because Jason was gone. I was so glad to see him. And he's got leadership on him. And he's, I just know, I'm thinking, I feel better here. And I, I, I would hope that part of his assignment is to make South Point Community Church the greatest church on the planet. Whether we ever get there, I don't know. With me here, probably not. But I think part of his assignment is I watch him and he just serves and serves and serves. I could go, down, I could go through this whole room and find tons of you and just go, that's probably your assignment. I'm not sure George and Kyle, that come close, is, their assignment isn't just to bring joy to South Point. I've never seen somebody bring so much joy over and over and over and over again. I could just go through the whole church. What's your assignment? Do you know? You probably wouldn't if you don't serve a lot. You serve people. Three, I guess I don't have these numbered. Next thing about being significant, being seen, we're called to leave our mark on this generation, this generation. You're not going to live again. You're going to live in heaven, but not here. We get one run at this life, and this is the one that God put us in. He didn't put you in another generation. He put you in this one. And I know you might not like the way the world is right now. I'm kind of disgusted with it myself right now. Anybody want to join my team? I'm a little disgusted with the way things are. But you know what? This is the one I was given. I am supposed to make my mark here. I'm not going to let anybody talk me out of it. I'm going to let anybody lead me out of it. I'm not going to get disgusted out of it. I'm not going to get disappointed out of it. I'm not getting discouraged out of it. I am an Esther, and I have been called for such a time as this, and you are an Esther, and you have been called for such a time as this. The world might be going to hell on a handbasket, but it isn't going to get there any faster because of me. I'm going to slow the whole process down as much as I possibly can by giving everything I got to making that thing slow. Maybe I can't stop it, but I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to make the devil hate me every day of my life. That's how you want to live if you want to live with significance and be seen. Claim your generation as your responsibility. When Jesus looks at you this morning, he starts from the place of love. I want you to know that because all of his relationships are based in love. For God so loved the world, the world without him. So loved, it always starts with God's love, God being loving. He always starts there. He says, I don't know if God loves me. I'm gonna tell you what, I know he does because he is love. He said, well, I'm bad, I know. I've been hearing about you. <laughs> but he loves you. Fun little story and I'm almost done. And he wants to begin this relationship with you based. He wants to start a relationship based in love. He wants to start with love. You have to understand, he loved you, so he died for you. Now, are there things you need to fix? Yes. Remember, you have to align with this. You want him to look at you and smile. So, yes, that never goes away, but he did die for you. You just have to surrender your life to him and start this relationship based in love with him. So I'm at the Clay County Fair. And uh, so I was betting on the pigs. I did that with my grandkids. I'm leading them. Spiritual power. I didn't really tell them we were betting on pigs right now. I just said, hey, if we underline these, we might win a prize. And, uh, and so they go, hey, yeah. And I, 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 now they're officially into gambling. <laughs> but we won two little pigs, so they're happy. And, um, and, uh, but, and, and so it was so funny watching those pigs. When those big ones came out at the end, Tyrone the Terrible. I thought, when this one pig came out, could barely move, so tired and old and fat. I thought, there I am. <laughs> there, there I am. And I, but when I was at the fair, I was looking around at all these people because it all started filling up. And I don't know how many people from certain parts of this city go to the Clay County Fair because I didn't see them there. But man, I saw all these guys in tank top shirts. 
tons of guys in tank top shirts. I was just laughing. And I looked at him and I wanted to go, hey, you know, no one does that anymore. And then I thought, they would look at me, here's what they would do. They would look at me and look around the fair and go, what are you talking about? <laughs> they all got them on. I thought, you're right, I'm wrong. You still wear tank tops and you're cool with it. I mean, how would I see your tattoo if you didn't have that on? It was all ethnicities. I mean, all ethnicities. I don't think a lot of folk there had a lot of money. I don't. But man, were they having fun. And let me tell you what I want. I told my sons this. I'm going to tell you this. I walked around that whole thing with eight grandbabies. I was exhausted afterwards because I was a nervous wreck. I forgot what it's like to be in that environment with people that are only three feet tall. You just keep thinking, I hope I can take eight home. And so I was, I was having a ball, but I was a nervous wreck and because um, and, uh, we didn't have quite enough adults helping us, and, and I'm a little old for that kind of emotional tension. And, uh, and so I was tired at the end, but I looked around, and everybody was nice. Uh, listen to me, gang. Everybody there was nice. I didn't meet one rude human being there. Everybody was laughing. Everybody's having a good time. Nobody was jostling to get in line. You'd think they hadn't watched the news. I mean, they need to watch the news and find out how bad it is. They actually look like they just wanted to go to the fair, enjoy some rides, take their date out, be around other people. I think they wanted to be somewhere where all that stuff the news talks about wasn't being talked about and wasn't being lived. And I watched, I mean, I felt it. And I kept looking around at all these people at the Clay County Fair. So you guys will know, that's who I was raised with, just so you'll know. That's my people. That's the neighborhood I was raised in. That's the money we had. That's how I lived before I met Jesus. And I looked around and I go, now seriously, I thought one time, I almost out loud, I go, God, I love these people, Lord. Now, you know when the sun set and the alcohol came out and the drugs came out of the bag, sin was present. Can we all say amen? Since, since normal, I call it normal sin. Lust, greed, pride. It would have just probably with a little alcohol and some drugs, it would have stepped up. And we'd have seen it for all its glory. But I looked at him and I thought, man, you guys just want to be loved. You just want to belong. You just want to be significant. And I never had more hope than I have for the gospel than I did stand there in the middle of that street. I thought, that's exactly what Jesus offers. He doesn't have uh, tell churches to answer all the problems of society. He said, you go love people. You go catch them and then make them belong. You make them significant. They'll stay and they'll love me. And I thought, not anybody can do that. Love people. Make them belong. Make them significant. And God forbid if we've ever done anything to anybody in this room or on the other side of that screen or out in that rotunda that ever made you feel less than that. I have hope for Jesus in this world. I thought, we got to preach. We got to build this church. These people are hungry, and they're actually open. The news is a liar. You'd think there was no hope for the world. Jesus is still hope for the world, and they're still hungry. You say, how can I get in a tribe where I belong? Well, you got to be in God's family, last thing. You got to be in God's family. How do you get in his family? You got to become a child of God. How do you become a child of God? Jesus came to this earth, God in the flesh, lived a perfect life, died on a cross for crimes somebody else committed. That would be yours, my friend, and mine, and everybody in this room. 
But he rose as we celebrated last Sunday on the third day, proving that he was God, and it all worked. And his sin, our sin, could now be covered in his finished work. But you have to accept that you're a sinner, you need a savior, and then surrender your life to him to live for him for the rest of your life the best you can and be transformed into his image. But man, he will look at you and you'll never be invisible. You'll always be seen and you'll know you'll be seen and you'll be living like this. Watch, Father. Watch this. Watch me raise this family. Watch me help my work, the people I work with. Watch me preach this gospel. Watch me serve these children. Watch me. And he'll watch you and you'll feel significant. If you don't know Jesus today, I want to invite you to think through this right now. And I'm going to ask you in a moment with your head bowed, nobody looking around, to raise your hand and say, Russ, pray for me. I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. And if that's you, I'm going to pray a prayer, and we're going to pray it together. I'm not going to make you stand up. I'm not going to make you come to the front. Actually, nobody's going to do anything to you. I'll give you something you can do afterwards. But I need to know this morning, are you ready to have his face look at you with a smile on it? Are you ready to surrender your life to him this morning? Because he is crazy about you. You need to surrender and receive all of his love. Everybody said amen. So if you'll bow your heads, and in this room, if you'll say right now, Russ, I want to make Jesus Lord of my life today right here in this room. I want you to put your hand high in the air and keep it up. Lift your hand high in the air and say, pray for me. I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. Yeah, keep it up for just a second. I see you two back there. All right, it's three. Help me out here, everybody. We're just asking God right now that you would raise. Yes, thank you. Keep it up for just a second so we can scan the room and find you. If you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, do it right now. If you're online, you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, get in the comment box right now and say, I'm surrendering my life to Jesus right now. Keep it up. Anybody else? You can put your hands down, all right? Anybody else? I'm going to count to three, and if you haven't raised your hand, today's your day. Today's the day of salvation. You want to give your heart to Jesus, do it. One, two, three. Raise your hand. Yes, God bless you in the back. Yeah, all right. Praise, yep, see you. God bless you. Thank you. All right, you can put it down. Everybody in this room, pray this prayer with me. But those of you that just raised your hands, mean this with all your heart, and then I'll tell you what to do, and then we're going to have a go game here and make sure that somebody... Now, if you didn't sign up yet, you better go to 4848 make sure that you registered, or you're going to miss out on this iPod or, or iPad and uh, Apple Watch. And uh, so make sure you've signed up to uh, be a part of that. All right, so right now, everybody, pray this prayer with me. Lord, I know I have sin in my life that has separated me from you. I know you love me, and your love is toward me today. I know you died for my sin, that I might have a relationship with you. I surrender my life to you right now. Teach me how to walk with you. Fill me with your spirit. Forgive my sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give everybody a hand who's raised their hand? Now, I'm going to tell you this twice so I don't forget this because it's most important. And Tyler's going to get up and do this uh, raffle. Or, I guess we can't call it a raffle. We'll be gambling again. Whatever this thing is that we're doing. And, um, but we have a new table that we'll, you'll see all the time out there. Today it's right against the wall called I Have Decided. There's a big blue banner up there. If you raised your hand, you have to stop. You will not believe the gifts that are in there. That is your next step in faith. So you say, what do I do now that I've raised my hand and prayed this prayer? You stop at the I have decided table and get that bag. You will not believe the stuff that's in there. You will be blessed. So please, if you raised your hand, prayed that prayer, that table, that is for you. So please stop there. I'm going to turn it over. Let's welcome Tyler back this morning. Who's ready to win some prizes? Man, I don't know about that. Who's ready to win some prizes? All right, here we go. So we're going to give away the iPad first. Man, this looks really nice. I keep asking Pastor Russ, can I please be a first-time guest? But he just won't let me. All right, you got you to gotta be here, either in, in, in the auditorium or Rotunda. If I say your name, you got to come up. Our winner 
for our, iPod, our Apple iPad is Peggy Sue Wallace. Peggy Sue Wallace, are you here? Did Peggy Sue, did you fall asleep? Did you fall asleep? Are you, are you leaning on someone's shoulder? Anyone see Peggy Sue? Ushers, help me out. Y'all see anyone moving? Wow. We do? We do? Tell her she's got to come in here. If she wants this, she's got to come into the auditorium. She coming? Is she coming? I'm about to give this. Tell Peggy Sue I'm about to give this to someone else. Oh, she, oh. Is she here? She, oh, okay. She's got a walker. I feel horrible. Wow. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Can we, hey, Ryan Rodriguez, come get this for her, please. She's coming, guys, on her walker, man. I feel so bad. Look at Peggy Sue, man. Guys, give, give Peggy Sue a round of applause. She's right in the doors. God bless you. Come on. God wanted to bless Peggy Sue today. Forgive me. I'm so sorry. Don't hold that against anyone else. Hold that against me. <laughs> All right, next one. All right, Apple Watch. Man, I've always wanted one of these. I have one of the fake ones. They're nice, too. But this is the real deal. Okay, here we go. Our winner, drum roll, please. Could you guys, like, pat your... There we go. All right. Our winner for the Apple Watch is Ryan Finch. Ryan Finch, are you here? Don't they stop, Ryan. Come on, bro. You got to move a little bit quicker. I'm going to call the next name. Cheer him on, cheer him on, come on. Ryan, 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 Ryan. Appreciate you, Ryan. Congrats, man. Thanks for being here. God bless, all right? One more time for Ryan. All right, guys, I'm going to turn it over. I'm, turn, I'm going to turn it back to Pastor Russ. You guys had a great time so far today. God is good. Amen, amen. All right. Now, if you're a guest, you're going, hey, this church doesn't give money. Yes, we do. <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, but we're going to receive the Sunday morning tithes and offerings. So those of you all know we have three ways to give here. So if you'll get your devices out and to get ready to give online, you can watch and know how to do it there. It's right there on the screen. Um, you can text South Point CC to 77977. You can use the envelopes in front of you for cash or checks and then leave it in the box there on your way out. Um, obviously, you can use our app or those, some of you are signed up online giving, but we always want to pray over our offering and worship as we do if you give that way. Amen? So thank you for your faithfulness. Appreciate you being here. Got a couple of instructions that will make the rest of the day fun for you. And um, uh, so just hang on just a second. Let's pray over this offering. Father God, thank you for your goodness and your grace to us today, for all that this day has been and what it's had for the people's lives that you have been a blessing in. So Lord God, I pray that as we give today, that you will honor our giving by blessing us in a powerful and mighty way, but then also use it, Lord God, to reach souls and make disciples and change the world. Multiply it to meet every need. God, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. All right, now, I want to give you some instructions because we decided it would be best if I did this. All right, all right. Here, here's how it's going to go. There's no grow track today, so those of you who do grow track, there is not one. Um, I, I want to thank all of our amazing serving teams that have made today possible. Can you really thank these people? They've been tremendous. Don't forget if you, decide, if you raised your hand to stop by and get the gift bag that's there at the I've Decided table. But also if you're a new guest, there's a visitor's table also that has gifts in it for you if you're just here for the first time and, um, and you want to get that, make sure you grab one of those on the way out. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, now, here's how we're going to do it. I hope a lot of you stay. I think it's still raining. Is it still raining? And, uh, I, and so I, I don't know if it's going to work where the kids can go out. That depends on how wet you want to let them get. And I mean, the games are there. And, um, but you, how wet you want to let them get. And uh, so that's there. And the rotunda is all set up with chairs. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We were going to be outside. We've got tents out back that are set up and everything for all this. But those of you that are staying, and, and we'd love for you to, we want you to do to hang out for a while. It's early. And we're not normally, if you're in the second service, not normally out of church right now, is get in line for the food trucks. They're all out there waiting on you. And then just grab chairs in the rotunda and circle them up. Just make a mess. I'm serious. Just, just take them, circle up with your family and that. Uh, we may roll out a few tables when we see how many people are staying. So you'll have tables. And we're, we're not going to, like, set them all up in order or anything. We're just going to get it to where you can have a good time together. Can we just be a family and figure this out together? 
So there's three trucks out there. You can get in line and stay dry. I want you to hang around and meet a lot of people. For all of you that came with somebody, thank you for coming with them, especially on a day like today. You're tremendous. Hope we see you again, and uh, you can hum, come be a part of our family. All right, let's all stand. I want to send you out with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Those of you online, sending you out too. And in the rotunda, you too. Thanks for being in the rotunda and, uh, and sitting through this and being a part out there. Father God, I just right now, if you'll lift both hands, I just right now send this people out into this world, Lord God, to love it. We want to go out there and just love it like you do. Serve it. And God, we want to live all week with this awareness that you're looking at us with a smile on your face. I send them out to be a people that are pleasing to you, a joy for you to watch them. Lord God, as we go out into our week and say, watch this, Lord. I pray that you are happy and blessed and pleased and affirming. God, I pray that every person in this room will find a sense of significance this week in ways they've never seen before and know your great love and the love of others and become a part of your mission and their fulfilling of their assignment. Bless the rest of this day. Bless the food as we eat, the fellowship as we are there together. God, thank you for this day in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you guys. All right. Have a great week. I'll see you out in the rotunda. See how this all rolls out.